and Sports Authority of India. I, Ekta Vishnoi, would like to welcome you all to this wonderful webinar on physical literacy being organized in partnership with M's Code Foundation, which is the need of the hour today for a young generation. Now, what is, why, why do we need such kind of a seminar and what is physical literacy? Physical literacy uh, is the motivation, the confidence, the physical competence, the knowledge and understanding to view and take responsibility for engagement in physical activities throughout your life. Literacy, it is the development of fundamental movement and sports skills children to move confidently and competently in a wide range of physical activities and sports not only in the sports situation it also uh, physical literacy also helps to include the ability to read what's going on in any other particular situation also and how to react appropriately in that situation uh, fit india mission uh, mostly encompasses around this concept of physical literacy as to we are encouraging in Indians or citizens through this Fit India mission to involve a physical activity in their daily routine for 30 to 60 minutes and to introduce the physical literacy concept at, uh, for the children. We have also launched the concept of Fit India schools where various kinds of uh, physical activity, various kinds of fundamental physical move skills. Today, I, uh, we have with us, I welcome today, Mr. Uh, uh, Ulela Gopichan, who actually needs no introduction. He is the National Badminton Coach of India and advisor to M Sports Foundation. We have Professor Margaret Whitehead. She is considered as mother of physical literacy and has also dedicated her entire life towards it. We are very glad to have you with us, ma'am. Welcome, uh, DG Sports Authority of India, Sri Shandeep Pradhan sir, who has also joined us today. Now I will request Gopi sir. Thank you, Ekta, and uh, welcome to all of you uh, for this wonderful session. Um, today we are very fortunate to have the mother of physical literacy, the modern mother of physical literacy, I would say, the person uh, who I had said, and she's somebody who's been a physical education teacher herself, and also has spent a lot of time from in various universities training physical education teachers. She is the president of the Phys International Physical Literacy Association, and she is more importantly, a person who spent her entire life behind this philosophy. Uh, it's an honor and pleasure, ma'am, to have you here with us, uh, Dr. Professor Margaret Whitehead. We also have on the call the Nigel Green, um, who's been a friend, who has been uh, in India, uh, spreading the awareness of physical literacy. Uh, he's a key member, he's a core core team of Margaret and the International Physical Literacy Association. He has more than four decades of experience in physical education. He is somebody uh, who has vast experience in a variety of roles. And uh, thank you, Nigel, for being here. And uh, straight away, without uh, wasting any time, getting on directly to the question, I think uh, the explanation of physical literacy is a word which has been coined. The word has been coined by Margaret Whitehead. And also, the definition suggests the motivation, confidence, physical competence, and knowledge, and understanding to value and take responsibility for engagement in physical activity for life. This being the definition of physical literacy, ma'am, uh, to you, how did you develop this definition and the concept? Thank you very much and welcome to everybody. I'm delighted and honoured to be speaking to you and delighted and honoured to be having a dialogue with um, Sri Gopi Chan. So thank you very much. I think the question about why did I develop the concept? Um, as Gopi Chan said, I've been involved in physical activity all my life as a teacher, as a trainer and as a participant. 
and physical physical activity has been a very very important part of my life it certainly helped me to find myself to develop my self confidence helped me to flourish and my one wish is that everybody else should have that opportunity and the benefits that i've had from being involved in physical activity but it's not good out there it's not good there's not many people are continuing with physical activity throughout life this is not just schooling or young children this is throughout life and um, the young people and the older people are not getting involved and the picture in schools i'm talking particularly about england but elsewhere as well is not particularly good there isn't very much time in the timetable uh, the teachers are sometimes treated as second class citizens and having seen tremendous number of, of lessons across the world there is a tendency sometimes to focus on the more able rather than everybody in the class which is very sad because the people who are less able really need urgently to be introduced to the the possibilities of physical activity and they maybe get disillusioned and they see that physical activity is not for them i think in a whole package i would say that the thing that really concerned me is the lack of value for our whole embodied nature this is really saddens me and i think it's one of the causes of some of the problems that we've got so in your journey uh, in all these years um what do you think if if for a lay person uh, if i were to ask because there comes motivation confidence physical competence knowledge and understanding so in this sequence why did you think of these sequence and uh, what are the key aspects of physical literacy um i think you have to um put yourself into my position a lot of my work has been in pedagogy so um before i really spent all my time in philosophy i was a pedagog so i was very concerned with how people were teaching and how the teaching wasn't actually helping the situation and in relation to the value i decided that the best place to see if i could pin down the real value um of this activity that i wanted to promote was through philosophy and this philosophy is very important to me because it gives me the confidence um, of and the activity that i wanted to, to promote um, was through philosophy the promotion and this philosophy is very so important to me because it gives me the confidence um, of and the activity that i wanted to enable me to come up with the definition one is monism one is existentialism and one is phenomenology and i was looking in those philosophies for evidence of value so i was looking for value so first of all i studied monism which for western cultures is is um not necessarily familiar you are very lucky to have a, a culture which is based on monism which is great yeah, yeah yeah in in the west they seem to think that it's the body and the mind you've got two separate bits you've got dualism and the cognition and the mind is much more important and the body is simply a machine which keeps the mind going which is very sad and it downgrades physical activity um considerably but nowadays there is a, a very strong view that we are a whole and we talk about embodied cognition we talk about um essentially embodied existence coming through um neuroscience and discussion we are now all of a whole and so i felt that with this new surge of interest in holism there was to be value in our embodiment and in physical activity and then studied existentialism now existentialism talks about our creating ourselves um from we we exist and then we create ourselves we create our essence as we live and you create yes. yourself by all the different interactions you have around you we are yes. the result of all the behaviors and interactions therefore any aspect of our humanness which enables us to interact is very important and our embodied nature is one so here we were um making a significant contribution to um who we are and how we see the world so again i got support from existentialism um phenomenology is very concerned with the individual's perception and without going into detail you perceive on 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 the on the back as with a background of your own experience 
and perception which is very important in 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 life is embodied all perception is embodied so once again not only were we part of a whole not only did we help to create that the physical activity helps to create the person but it also is the backdrop to all our um, perception and our understanding of the world so i became very um passionate about wanting to share this view share the value and come up with a, a um, some uh, desirable state some some description of what i wanted people to realize and i think that the physical literacy actually is a, a good word and it encapsulates encapsulates much of what i've what i've learned it's about our physical nature it's about our literacy in relation to interaction with the world and so therefore to package the value i want to argue that the development of physical literacy is the way in to really getting the most out of our, out of life as a result of the fact that we've come into the world in an embodied way wonderful wonderful man from me um uh, at this time i think uh, nigel uh, peace please feel free to add if you need uh, to come in uh, for me i think i will just share my uh, side of the uh, story margaret uh, for me in the, i've been in sport for almost 30 years before uh, this word and this whole concept stuck to me uh, i started playing in the year 1985 coming into 2016 2015 april i was coaching a kid and this had actually two aspects of it and uh, for me each of it was very very important uh, the first aspect was i was teaching some kids about catching and throwing and some one girl actually dropped a shuttle and for the first time in my life i had to actually explain and i was suddenly uh, explained to a kid how to catch and that actually started me to introspect about what i was doing in sport and each of these words have experientially have really stuck to me before i even got to it. so when i really went back and started reading the book about physical literacy it was such a big uh, pleasant surprise because i was just getting answers uh, and was feeling there was somebody who was actually passed through and figured this out ahead of me so these things whether it's the uh, training able body that leads and actually giving too much of importance to performance as one values because you could see a lot of people uh, players actually getting very disheartened with performance and not continuing the sport that was one thing which i was feeling the experiences which players were getting uh, were healthy because there were so many dropouts in general across pe classes that you would see people drop out from each class because there was so much of focus on the top 5 in class that everybody in class started to feel that we belong here and that i started to relate the dots and i could actually see that people weren't continuing this for life because they didn't have great experiences and passions in the early part of their life so i kind of, when i saw the book when i saw this i just fell in love with the book and i said this is a concept which is so very important because not only were we in this rat race to produce champions uh, but we realized that uh, win was only looked at but success is not always about winning there could be successes and you still don't need to win and you could be the best of what you can be and that's all what mattered so even from performance perspective and also from life perspective this was something which came up to me as very very refreshing i think it was something for me was tremendously useful of uh, for you margaret a couple of questions i think one um, i think this is a little um, deviation um, what's your normal uh, daily life uh, how do you um, see it in your life progressing how did various changes in sport for yourself yes i would talk about that i don't want to lose the question that you asked me a little bit time ago about the key aspects of physical literacy but let's talk about me um at the moment we're locked down so that i can't carry on with my current life and i'm clearly in the last quarter of my time with you here in this world um 
but uh, at the moment, all I'm doing is I'm walking every day. All right. So um, if you look, if you look at me, um, I have been active, encouraged by my parents, clearly, in um, particularly dance, in tennis, in hockey, in camping. So I've had a really good range. I went to PE college, so I was involved in all the teams and everything. I then went into teaching and, and I continued to play tennis and I continued to dance. I led a dance in worship groups. So I've been active all the time and life went on and, and I continued to be active. And before lockdown, my pattern was that I had went to the gym twice a week and I walked two or three times a week and I had a dance class, which I went to once a week. And so right through my life, I have been active all the time. And it's very much part and parcel of my life and of who I am and where I get my, my pleasure and my, my confidence from. Will that do? <laughs> wonderful. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, it's so wonderful to see you. I know that you have had your challenges. You had uh, last year when we wanted you here, you had a surgery. But uh, you always have said this, this journey is for life. And you've always said that you keep going up and down. But it is each one's life is their own progression and it's yeah. not competing against somebody but you're on this journey by yourself that's something which uh, really has stuck to me yes that's one of the can, can i can i answer your question about the key aspects now yeah okay all right then so um there's quite a bit of confusion about physical literacy uh people interpret the words differently but can i just say that physical literacy is a goal it's a goal that we are aspiring to of lifelong participation it's a goal it's relevant to everybody whatever their endowment whatever their age wherever they live so this is relevant throughout the world however everybody is unique so the way that we encourage each person into this um desirable position of wanting to be physically active we have to be sensitive to um each person it's a holistic concept so it's not just um, physiological or, or psychological it's, it's it's a whole person and it's not a state it's a disposition it's a little bit like happiness you can't say I am happy and I've, I've, I've cracked the happiness I'm always going to be happy it's much more of an attitude which is a, a lifelong a lifelong journey and therefore you can't actually teach physical literacy but you need to provide experiences which are positive and meaningful so that you can develop a positive um, disposition, you can welcome taking part, um, you, um, you're not embarrassed, you're not humiliated, you don't fail. It's a, it's a self-affirming, rewarding experience. And if, if people have had that sort of experience, then they are likely to continue. So it's all about how you teach, how you work, participant and practitioner together, much somewhat less than what you teach although clearly that's important it's really how you engage how you empower people how you give people the confidence to see the potential of physical activity so, so there's one uh, question which comes up as a follow-up to this because typically uh, when we look at kids in class or when we look at sport we always are trying to measure is there a way in which you can measure it because uh, what you said uh, from a teacher's perspective is about the experience of the student and is there a way in which there is a certain measurement we can do so that uh, people are motivated to continue and that there is some record yes um, this is a, a very hot topic you know we could have a whole webinar on assessment but um, when we talk about assessment it seems as if you're giving somebody a mark or you are judging them. You're giving them a grade. Now that goes counter to what I've been talking about. We are charting their progress and their progress can go backwards and forwards and up and down because you know, of the situations that we're in. So that we talk about charting progress. What are we trying to promote? We're trying to promote a positive disposition because people are motivated, confident, physically competent, have knowledge and understanding. It is in the, almost in the hands of the participant about where they are at. And so the IPLA, the International Physical Literary Association, 
have devised an, a, an instrument to chart progress, which is based on a most like me. So this is a situation where we have a whole series of questions and, and, and answers which can be, be mapped. And in a very simple way, the child can, with help if they're very young or very old, they can reflect on their level of motivation, their level of confidence. And there you can get a real picture of how they are feeling and how much they're involved, because that question comes in, how much are you involved? And then what we want to do is we want to then chart their progress later and, and look for where they feel more motivated, where they've been more involved, when they're more confident to have a go, when their physical competence has become broader or wider, where their understanding and knowledge of holistic health has become greater, their understanding. So contrary to some other people who have done scores and marks, we feel this is a disposition which belongs to the individual. Let's ask the individual. And one of the problems about a lifelong concept is we are advocating that if people have positive experiences, particularly at a young age, because that's when people are very impressionable, the chances are that they are more likely to continue for 20, 30, 40 years. Therefore, this is, can't be a sort of a, uh, you can't say this is working because we've got this result. It doesn't work like that. I mean, I would love to think that 20, 30, 40 years time, I would love to think that more people are, are active. They are knocking on doors, build me facilities, do this, do that, teach me whatever. But I can't. All I can do now is say this is a desirable state. This is how I believe that we can help you to realize that state. And good luck to you as you launch yourself into your life. Will that do? Wonderful, wonderful. I think that's that's fantastic because uh, when I look at my life, uh, the two things which come up to me in my life uh, have been uh, my grassroots teacher. My my first coach was a coach called Hamid Hussain, uh, and actually uh, he never taught me uh, to play the sport in a particular manner. In the sense, you have to hit the shuttle like this or hold the racket in a particular sense. That I actually picked up by watching other kids around and other seniors around play. But what he did was he made me love to come to the stadium. And that for me was where resonates when you speak about this, because I think that happy experience made me come to the stadium often. And that is actually something which actually propels me to continue sport. But uh, the same reverse experiences happened in school. where. To school and since I was playing so much of sport I would miss a lot of classes in and uh, I had difficulty understanding a maths class and a physics class and then I would be sent out by the teacher and even today if you talk physics and maths to me and I'm the one who's running away because I didn't have very pleasant experiences in my childhood so I totally uh, resonate with what you say because I think many of the people and kids especially very disillusioned by the fact that uh, they have not great experiences and people are not praising them enough or people are judging them too much. And then those experiences carry on till adulthood and they drop off after they're compulsory. And then they say, this is not for us. And I think as you have uh, said, so, I wouldn't say rightfully, because I think you, you've been phenomenal. You've understood the entire concept. But I think for me, I think what you've said makes so much of sense that uh, I think it resonates with what is happening. So for me, uh, one other question comes up. How is it uh, today in India, uh, we have various cultures and various strata of people, um, uh, genders. Uh, how is it relevant as a concept for the entire society? Well, that's a question I might ask you. Um, how, tell, tell me about the nature of the activity and the participation in India. Um, and then I can tell you about possibly some reasons or some solutions. So what is the situation in India? How far are we to getting everybody involved? How far are you? Uh, well, I think um, for us culturally, um, one one thing is India, although is one country, uh, one country, but 
we have many countries in one in a lot of ways uh, from an economic perspective also there are cities in rural india think and act very differently uh, geographically uh, but also uh, from a cultural perspective there are many states which very individual identities and races and communities and religions with very different cultures but in a lot of ways uh, if i look at uh, relating it to things uh, we actually had very good physical um, culture or physical activity culture or physical literacy for a long period of time because of the activities in in built in our culture were, are built around us and uh, women uh, exercising may not have been great but dance forms in various cultures are very popular and they are very activity based they are very movement based and also in general uh, when we look at elders we we touch their feet we have kind of told to um, eat food um, on the ground folded legs and sitting down our temples are all uh, very far on many cultures we have actually walking uh, padyatras which are very famous trekkings so many of these things whether you go to our temple and ask um, in the uh, in the andhra pradesh or telangana where we actually walk up mountains to go to temples or uh, shabarimala or many of the other places actually have long walks as proper things and dance is a proper culture and we've got many festivals which actually incorporate them so sport is a very new thing or competitive sport is a new thing but sport in general and i remember maybe 20 years ago not about 1980s i would see every evening before the advent of uh, television and mobile phones of uh, entertainment digitally i would say every evening all the elders would go out and play a ball badminton or a volleyball in the village and that was a common entertainment activity only in recent times has uh, western influence also changed it and also prosperity and more money and also digital means of entertainment have changed our concepts uh, and i know that uh, when we spoke uh, you you spoke about rich culture of india in dance uh, and uh, you've always uh, said this is not only about sport it is about physical activity so um if uh, you could share some thoughts on uh, what i have said and uh, also um how do you think um this journey can be taken forward not an easy question um i think you've touched on it in a number of ways um i think that the experiences that people in school have um should be broad so that they have experience of competitive games but not only competitive games because there's winning and losing and if you lose every time then you're bound to be less motivated um there's the whole area of yoga and and, and martial arts and that sort of thing i think that's a um a particular constituent there may be some fitness um activities which are which are useful and good and some people like to take their their exercise in that way Uh, you talk about outdoor ad- adventure at going outdoors and mountain climbing and you talk about dance Now, all the whole spectrum of types of physical activity broadly has been what mentioned by you yeah. and as you get older you can't do what you did 20 30 years ago and therefore my activities have changed from dashing about on a on a tennis court to you know dancing more gen- gently etc 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 Uh, however um there needs to be this um core of um self-realization and pleasure and quality that comes from participating and then i would say if you've got this passion and need to move in a way that i suppose i have um you really do want to have facilities and opportunities for people to continue exploring and developing their involvement in different activities this is one of the problems in school there's some teaching they're qualified teachers but then when the young people leave school then where do they go 
And sadly, peer pressure, um, money, other attractions is pulling them away. And for a whole range of reasons, they don't they don't continue. And one of them is that um, I think we we do need to have a, a, a sort of a, a layer or a group who are really catering for the, let's say, 16 to 30 year old that they are encouraged to participate fully in a wide range. There are people uh, who are working with them who understand that motivation is the key. And their job is not to say, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. Their job is to say, well done, you've done this. Now then you need to work on to the next thing. Well done, you tried really hard today. And there's a sort of a, a can do when there's a positive atmosphere. And that I hope that in the school, when we can get qualified teachers and, and facilities, etc., everybody can go, can leave school with this um, positive, fulfilling experience, which they want to continue. And we need to have, be ready to welcome those people into the community so that they continue. But it does need not only facilities and equipment, it does mean the practitioner, the leadership, the teacher, the coach, who is concerned with the individual. They're not teaching hockey, they're not teaching tennis, they're teaching the individual. The individual to thrive and prosper and make their own journey. That's, the, that's a very important link. It is people who, um, they're models, they have leadership in, in the area, who can um, light the fire of, of really fulfilled a participation which is so important for human flourishing i seem to think we've just got to find a whole a whole army of people to scoop up from school and to make sure that they are well on the way to full participation throughout life oh, wonderful i think it's so refreshing to hear this because uh, i think for too long uh, especially in high performance sport you kind of are talking about um, corrections and mistakes, but I think what you've said makes so much of sense because I think when a kid comes to play, uh, we are teaching him how to hold and the moment he holds it another way, we will say, not this way, you need to get back. And by the end of it, the session is saying, forget it, this is not for me. But uh, I think what you say is so relevant. But I would also, I think for us in our country, uh, we've been very fortunate. And if you look at Indian sport as such, uh, because we spoke about facilities and equipment. But one of the great things about Indian sport, Indian uh, culture has been the fact that whether it's yoga or whether it's Kaladi, which is the martial arts or it's Malkam, uh, or whether it's the dance forms or whether it's wrestling, hockey, um, Kabaddi, Koko. I think most of the sports which have come up in the country uh, have a very local relevance because one of the things is they are played in small areas and they have only hands and sticks as equipment. So when you look at Indian sport in general, they have been very literate in that sense that they have uh, a wide range of activities to do. And also they have very equipment friendly or less equipment and less facilities. So that's something which is a country which doesn't probably have everybody uh, have access to facilities can feel good about is the fact that we have a culture and an ingrained uh, system, whether it's yoga or whether it's culinary or whether it's a dance forms, where you don't need any equipment and you, you can flourish by yourself. And that's something which we as a country have used over the years. That's something which is... Uh, Margaret, one uh, question comes up uh, because uh, when we brought this concept physical literacy and uh, we spoke about a lifelong thing, People were talking about, uh, is it anything different from physical education? Because we're using the word physical education. Um, is it different from physical education? Is What is physical literacy? That's one. The uh, other follow-up question is regarding uh, the Olympics and PL, or Olympic sport and PL, or super competitive sport and PL. What's the relevance for both? OK, OK, fine. Um, Physical education is that part of the education system which is devoted to developing our embodied nature and our physical skills. So it's a subject. 
physical literacy is a goal. That's where we're going. It's an aspiration. So there is no conflict. There's no conflict at all because one is a, a, an established part of schooling and the other one is um, an aspiration. So you take part in the, your physical education. And for me, the goal would be that they um, develop the motivation to continue through life. Um, we have the, 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 the concept of PE and sport, which has another problem. And PE really needs to be much wider than sport. And I, I'm, you know, it's music to my ears that you're talking about martial arts and yoga and, and climbing and everything. So I think sport is part of physical education, but it's not the whole part. And then, of course, all these things sit in a whole umbrella of physical activity. So physical literacy is a goal. And it sits alongside the activity, the curriculum time that there is. So one is the, the actual physicality of doing it, the practicality of doing it, and the other is the reason why you do it and the goal and the, the benchmark against which you judge whether you're being successful. So I hope that that's not um, too difficult. But they, they, people say, well, I'm going to do physical literacy. You don't do physical literacy, okay? You do various other things, and you're taught in such a way that your physical literacy is, is, is developed. So then um, the relationship between physical literacy and Olympic athletes, which we've mentioned before on another occasion, I believe that there should be a reciprocal, there is a reciprocal, can be a reciprocal arrangement. Um, by building a, 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 a sound physical literacy, a sound um, disposition, you, you learn to persist, you learn to achieve, you learn to enjoy, you learn fulfillment. And I would hope that if physical literacy as a goal was the basis of Let's talk about schooling, as so if that's easier to talk about schooling. I think if that is the basis, then I think that those who are most able will clearly be visible and they will have the interest and the commitment um, and, and the knowledge to persist to their highest level. I think through a physical literacy base, everybody is served. Those people who want to make it part of their life, then they will have this underlying motivation, the underlying um, self-belief that they have developed to go further. So I think physical literacy should help um, the, the um, Olympic athletes. And then I think that the, and it's quite a different way, but I think that the Olympics can help to foster physical literacy. It's inspirational, absolutely inspirational. And when you see um, people performing at a high standard, this is something which sweeps you up. It's happened particularly in, in, in England with cycling. When, when we came to be quite good at cycling, you know, everybody was cycling. They had this business passion, et cetera. Um, however, the sad thing is that in most instances, we have the Olympics and everybody is delighted and thrilled and inspired and wants to take part. But there isn't the opportunity when they leave. I think I mentioned to you before, in the 2012 Olympics, the women's hockey people, I think they were they won all the prizes. Um, what happened outside the stadium, there were two small pitches and people borrowed sticks and balls and they, they played. Many of them we'd never played before. And they were interested. They maybe went to watch the matches and they were interested. And if they were interested, the people who were running this outside stadium situation could give them the information about if they lived in Birmingham, there are these five or six clubs who would welcome you. So prior to the Olympics, they had set out nationwide a whole network of clubs and possibilities and leisure centers where they could continue or start to play to play hockey. So the planning began about 12 months before the Olympics. They then had the Olympics, people came and they could say, well, if you're interested, yes, here in Bradford, there are two courts, two, two clubs you can go to and here in London where you live, etc." So it can be a high and then it goes flat because there's nowhere for them to go. And people need to be there, like my army of people to sweep up the children there to, to sweep them up and help them, whatever level they're at, to, um, uh, to develop and develop their self-esteem, their self-confidence, and their physical competence, wherever they start from. And if we can catch them at that situation, I think the Olympics can do a fantastic job.
Wonderful. I, I think that should be uh, clearly uh, the Sports Authority of India um, over the years has done very well uh, to train uh, top most athletes and we've had some good performances at the world level. And I hope that many of them um, here on the call, I'm sure uh, once the big events like the Olympics happen, I'm sure when the nation uh, has a huge interest in those sports, we will be prepared with our army of uh, people to coach them and train them and also the infrastructure to support the interest which comes on. Excellent, excellent. Now, do you think, I mean, we could go on talking all morning, it's delightful. Do you think we ought to see if there are any questions for us to answer? Yes, yeah, so I think uh, Nigel uh, uh, and uh, everybody on the call, I think if you have any questions, please post them and um, our uh, expert uh, Nigel Green will take those questions and then uh, post them uh, for us. Uh, Nigel, over to you. Do you have some questions? Yeah, thanks, Gopi. And uh, it's been a fasc fascinating uh, conversation that yourself and Margaret have been having. And I know you could chat for hours, but I've been monitoring the questions. Uh, and I've got a few questions to put uh, to, to you both. Um, one of them relates to the importance of uh, the academic study against the importance of, of physical activity. Um, so I, I wonder how either of you feels that physical literacy fits in from that point of view. Shall I, shall I start? Um, yeah, I can yes. start. Um, as individuals, we have a wide range of capabilities, aesthetic capabilities, artistic capabilities, cognitive capabilities, physical capabilities. And if we want to um, realize our potential, then we need to explore each of these capabilities. A musical capability, it might be, it might be a, a, a singing capability, um, it might be a physical capability, it might be a mathematical capability, and we don't advocate that um, we are uh, an, an academic subject. We don't need to have respectability for being an academic subject. We are, we are valued because we give, provide a unique experience and developing a particular aspect of our human nature. So it sits alongside, rather like the arts. The arts are not necessarily very cognitive, but they develop our creativity and our perception. Um, and and physical education, physical literacy is developing your your embodied potential. It's different. We are a a conglomeration of a whole range of different potentials. So we're not to be compared because we are unique. Guppy, feel feel free to pick up on that. But um, some of some of the comments are saying it's 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 difficult because schools put pressure on us to do well at academic studies. Yet we know the children particularly want to take part in, in physical activity. How, how do we balance that? I think one way, and there's enough studies, and um, I know what Margaret has said is a whole, whole a new way of looking at things where your development is not only um, on one side, but on as a whole individual and your experiences make you who you are. That's a very deep uh, understanding of the subject. From my side, I think uh, many of them would ask this question and uh, uh, for us in India, it's like all this is fine, but will it help in me getting marks? And that's the typical question. And I think there is enough studies which actually say that more physical activity helps you to be smarter and neurons in your brains are developed because of physical activity. So. I think uh, there's enough studies which suggest that if you're physically more active, you will be even more better cognitively uh, from an academic perspective as well. So that's also something which I think is important. If somebody is asking that question, that's, that's the answer. But I think uh, I totally agree with Margaret that I think the, the, the experiences which you gain on the sporting field, the intelligence which you gain, the, the understanding which you game of your mind and body together, I think that is something which you have to value much more than the mere academic marks. And hopefully uh, that could be the smaller aspect, but uh, many of us in our country uh, especially look at that. So even that, I think is taken care of by physical activity. 
Okay, yes, that's, I mean, I, I, I would like to say something, and I have to say this very carefully, is that um, uh, some of the marks that the children, the pupils get, some of the exams, um, some of the cognitive study is perhaps, and I choose my words, get it, perhaps less used, less relevant in life. You know, um, do I really need to know a pack of historical facts? Do I really need to know calculus and detailed mathematics? How, what percentage of the population of the school is going to really blossom as a result of looking at uh, trigonometry and, and looking at other things? But everybody, everybody can benefit mental health, physical health, social health through participation in physical activity throughout their life. So it really is well worth investing time in if you want to have quality of life, human flourishing, and a, a, a holistically healthy population. I really feel that people are just saying, oh, it's recreation, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It's much more, it's self-realization, and it's quality of life, and physical activity, as you say, opens so many doors. So it's... it's um, Yes, we are asked this question, and they, they want to have a grade. But this is where, copy Chan, there's got to be leadership at the top. There's got to be not necessarily all these inspectors and government and ministers who all they want to value is people who go to university, people who are very cognitive. Well, that's fine. We need those people. But we need the, the other half or two thirds who are going to work. They're going to use their social skills. They're going to be with people. They're going to do a whole range of other jobs. And you just have to remember that we are, education is for a lifetime. And I would argue strongly that it's well worth the time to get these people who are um, motivated and confident to take part just for the quality of their life, their holistic health. I feel that very strongly. Thank, thanks, Margaret. Uh, that, that's good. And, and interestingly, there's a few more comments on that about um the the influence of parents and, and really as as educators we've got to educate the, the parents as well uh, as to the importance of of regular physical activity for their children and for the parents themselves so they can they can flourish throughout their lives and that that brings me into the next question um which links into the the life course and and you've both uh, mentioned about how your journeys have developed. Gopi, you, you mentioned the importance of, of a coach at that early age. Margaret, you mentioned different influences. So, Margaret, if you can just pick up on the different influences at the different stages of life. So the parents at the early years and then the teachers, the coaches and so on and how they, how they can be very influential on encouraging people to to change their disposition towards physical activity. Yes, well, I mean, clearly valuing is one of the most important things. And um, people need to have a reason to, to change. You know, people aren't going to change just out of the blue. It needs to be a rational choice. I, I would like to start with the early years, the preschool years. And there is a sort of a, a rule of thumb that the young child needs to have three hours a day of floor time for them to, to explore, to uh, experiment, to um, run, jump, roll, kick, find, find, find what they can do um, and enable the full physical development to blossom. So that the, you've got the, 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 the physical development which needs to be um, uh, uh, secured through activity. And the more you have activity, the more physical development, the more physical development, the more activity. Um, I would like to see a lot of work with the noughts to, to three or fours and the parents really um, providing what we call enabling environments, environments where, where people can go inside, outside and, and, and explore using their physicality. The, the second section really is the, the early year, the, not the early years, but the five, the schooling years, five to say 16 to 18. Now, these are very impressionable years, and there's a lot of growth going on, a lot of character development, personality development, and it's crucial there 
that the, the teachers, the assistant teachers and the, any coaches who they're involved with, um, really promote physical, physical activity in a positive way, in a can-do situation, so that this is established when they leave. So I think you've got this, you've got this um, uh, very important time, the only time when every child will have worked with a qualified physical education teacher. So that's very important. You then move into adulthood. And I would like to feel that um, medical profession and the paramedics don't give them pills, give them a, a suggest that they should they should take more activity. Far better than giving them giving them medication. You've got physiotherapists, you've got occupational therapists, you've got leisure manager, leisure center managers and staff. There are a whole group of people who I think could do more to promote physical activity. It's an important part of life for a whole range of reasons. And at the same time, you've got peers and parents who, who want to be supportive. So that's very important at this time of life. Have the opportunity, holistic health, um, meeting people, going outside, a whole range of things are, are valued. And then when you I, get to... I if I just pause, pause you there, because I want, I want to make him go up here. Guppy, um, two two points. One, you uh, initiated uh, the Hyderabad Physical Literacy Days, which encouraged a wide range of people to get involved in physical activity on those days, and you close streets and things like that. But also, you know, how do you impact on your coaches to encourage them to adopt a physical literacy approach? I think the understanding of the philosophy is important the value which we give physical activity and this journey for life is something which is very important because in our whole rush to learn things which give us marks and admissions to universities, we kind of neglect physical activity and sport in early years of our life. And in later part of our life, we are not enjoying it, we are not motivated enough, we are not enjoying it enough, we don't have the knowledge and understanding and of the entire sequence of the uh, definition, we don't have because it starts off that we don't have the motivation to do it later in life. So I think what we need is a paradigm shift in the way we think. I think the, the early days people have to think that my kid should play and give him opportunities to roll, kick, move freely. And in school, you should have teachers who are encouraging them to just play, just have fun, just run around, move around, play around, and just have a happy experience out of it. And then when, when we're going to school, out of schools and in universities and in adulthood, I think it's important that each one in society starts to value it. And I, and I take this word out from the last time um, Margaret spoke. We've been extras for too long in each field. I think whether we are at school, we are looked at as extras. Physical activity and sport is looked at. Physical education teacher is looked at as extras. When we go up in life, when you get up in the morning and want to go for a run, it's almost like, oh, you're wasting time out there. But people are okay to take a pill, but they're not okay because the doctor is prescribing the pill. The physio is prescribing not physical exercise, but they're prescribing you take a pill and you can rest and don't walk, don't move. And this is what the prescriptions are. So I think every every segment of society needs to come together. And as Margaret said, it's a journey for life. And um, for me, as a sports person who's active sport, and I love playing, but I think uh, what uh, Margaret said in the earlier part made so much sense because I know that a physical sport like badminton, I cannot continue playing. So the journey will have to take another route. I will have to find another way of um, finding the same pleasure which I had find playing badminton because I don't think I can continue playing badminton for life, but I can be physically literate for life. And this concept gives me the understanding that you have to navigate your path, find another way where you can actually continue this journey for life. That, that's great. And actually, you, you've just mentioned a term there that's come up as one of the questions. You mentioned um, physically literate. And I, I'm just going to pick you up on that. Margaret, would you like to explain how 
physical literacy is a concept, a life course concept, and physically literate is a term there are some issues with? Yes, we try not to talk about being physically literate because there seems to be a, a, an end point. Well, if I've, if I've achieved that now, I don't need to do anything else. It isn't like that. It's a bit like happiness, so that you, you are mindful of being more happy or not happy. Um, so it's not something that you can pin down. You don't, there is no situation where you say, I am physically literate, because it depends on your, your attitude, uh, your perception, um, your, your disposition, and it might change in your circumstances. So we try not to use being physically literate. We are making progress on our journey. It's the goal. We want to maintain physical activity. Um, we want to maintain um, participation, i.e. we want to demonstrate our physical literacy. So it's something that you demonstrate and, it, and it's an individual journey. And so if, if people talk about, well, I, I don't think I'm physically literate or I, I'm, I'm physically literate now, uh, it's, that, it's not that sort of a concept. It's not that sort of a concept. And I know it's easy to say, oh, well, we're working on them becoming physically literate. We're working on helping them to make um, progress on their journey. I know it's a rather a nice, nice distinction but it isn't a steady state. You cannot teach it and say, tick the box, I've got it, I can, I can go now, I can finish. I'm not going to run again, I'm not going to play badminton again, I'm not going to dance again. I've got it, I've done it, thank you, bye-bye. That, that's, that's great. And, and again, I'm, I'm picking up on some of the comments on the chat, and there was uh, someone who just mentioned a culture of active life in India. And I think that's a really nice way of, of putting physical literacy. And, and Gopi, you mentioned the idea of paradigm change, so there becomes a culture of li of active life in India. But that change has got to start somewhere. And I know Gopi and, and a lot of other people are really promoting physical literacy. And, and advocacy is the key. But how do we how do we get the politicians? the policy makers, the principals at schools, the parents to want to promote more physical activity. I'll, I'll ask you first, Gopi, and I'll, I'll perhaps let Margaret come in on that. For me, um, if I look at the last, say, 10 years, I think there's been a huge shift in the way people have thought in our country. Uh, we have a government uh, which is looking at uh, we have this movement called the Fit India Movement, uh, Kalo India, Kalo is sport, so uh, let India play, that's one of the other movements we've had. So people uh, are looking at sport very differently from what they have looked at, whether it's politicians or whether it's bureaucrats or whether it's schools, parents, everybody. So we are making our steps, I think, pretty rapidly in this state, but it's a huge country with a huge level of challenges and a wide range of challenges so we will have an issue penetrating it through society but i do believe that whether it's Kelo india where we've had young adults play uh, yeah, children play whether it's uh, universities Kelo india universities or whether it's uh, the Kelo india program which talks about uh, scholarships for young athletes which takes care of one sport in a particular manner or making physical education a part which is mandatory every day in school is also something which is some state governments have taken. Some state governments have also encouraged happiness as a movement and taken that forward, value education as a movement, taken that forward. So when I look at these seats, I see a lot of encouraging things. Even this uh, Fit India movement is something which uh, our Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi, uh, he has gone ahead and actually made such a big uh, thing because as a country to get the top person talking about the need for activity and physical uh, sport is something which is huge. And uh, I remember uh, between the years uh, 2015 August till 2016 for eight months uh, in every speech of our Prime Minister he had a mention about sport and movement and not only about winning in sport. 
but participation in sports. So I think we have a lot of uh, good changes happening from a from the top, from a leadership perspective, and also from the parent side. There's a lot better understanding, but it's a huge country with a lot of issues. So we will take time getting there. But I see a lot of positive influences. Margaret, I'll just pause a minute because I, I'm I'm just going to again pick up some of the comments and some of my experience. As you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of working with the Heritage School Group in, in uh, Delhi Gorgon area. It, um, and it's very clear that those schools value physical education. They give an hour of physical education every day to the vast majority of their students. I've also been into some government schools and there the provision is less. And also the, the class sizes are much bigger and the facilities are more restrictive. So there's, there are issues, as, you, as you've said, Goffey, and progress is being made. Um, Margaret, would you like to, to pick up on any of those points? Well, I don't know what, the, what time we've got, but um, briefly we talked about what can we do. And I think that I believe it needs to be top down and it needs to be bottom up and happening at the same time. I think that those of us who advocate physical literacy need to have the confidence to um, uh, articulate very clearly the value we need to have the, the understanding, the confidence and the articulacy to promote what we believe in. I think that we've the, the sort of a layer of people, if they, if they are committed, if they're prepared to put their head on the block, you know, and say, this is what I believe is very valuable, etc. And I think we've got to be persuasive. We've got to be persistent. We've got to understand. We've got to have the confidence and the articulacy to put the, the point forward and counter arguments. And then the other thing is that you talk about good examples. I mean, I know in this country there are at least, I don't know, six to 12 schools in our country who are out, that are outstanding, that their physical education is, is blooming, is blossoming, physical literacy is being developed all around, everybody stays for um, extra um, time after school, uh, we don't very often have competitions against other schools. We, we're all working together. I, I think if we could have, if you could have some examples of good practice and the attitudes of the parents, the teachers, the young people, when they leave, to say, yes, well, this is great. I'm going to go on with that. And then you look back, well, how, how was it that we got there? We did it this way or that way. Can we learn from examples of good practice? And I think if we can do the top and the bottom, you know, I think we shall be on the way to finding finding the way to promote physical literacy. Yeah, I, I'm actually conscious of time now. I haven't had a, an indication as to whether we've run out of time. Um, I've, I've got a question which relates to the lockdown uh, and, and how we can help students, but I actually think that this would fit into the session that we've got on Wednesday more effectively because on wednesday we're going to look at how uh, how we can practically work uh, and the sort of in, how we can create positive environments that encourage people to be more physically active so i i don't know Gopi, have, have you got anything you want to uh, finish up with or margaret well, have you any comments Gopi, or do you want me to come first you can go first. All right. Well, um, I think that I'd like to thank you very much, Gopi, for the privilege of discussing and debating with you and to your team who set up this whole thing. I think it has been, in my view, very profitable, uh, very successful. And um, thank you again. And I look forward to discussing with you maybe on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you so much, Margaret. For me, I think uh, each word which you have said uh, resonates so much value for our country because I think we need to value physical activity much more. And the experiences which people have should make them ask for more. And we as a society need to look at things very differently from what we have. Whether it's top down, bottoms up, side to side, I think pressure has to come from each quarters. I think we need to kind of get together 
to make this whole thing possible. For me, we've been extras too long is something which has remained with me because I think we, uh, in, in school, I think the value of physical activity and in life, the, active, the, act, the value of physical literacy and activity is much more than anything else. And we need to prioritize that and spend enough time and resources on it. I think that is very, very important for each one of us. I think, uh, I think we are running out of time. Um, we will be continuing this journey with a lot more questions. As Nigel said, we will go through the COVID scenario and also how we in our country can take this forward as a, as a journey. Uh, in which each each people can actually take it their own personal journeys and also together as a society how we can take this that's something which we'll discuss on wednesday um thank you very much margaret it's an honor pleasure i think uh, your your it's your amazing i think your energy your knowledge i think is so motivating for all of us thank you nigel for uh taking um and helping taking time off and helping us in making this whole thing possible. I would like to thank the Fit India movement, um, uh, who's, uh, who's the idea behind uh, this is our Honorable Prime Minister. I think he values physical activity and uh, he talks about yoga day and he is somebody who's uh, really motivated us to go forward in this movement. Uh, thank the Elm Sports Foundation, uh, whose uh, team has uh, helped us put this entire thing forward and do Who's, who actually take a huge interest in promoting this uh, concept. And I uh, would like to thank the Sports Authority of India and each one of you participating here. Thank you very much and uh, see you again on Wednesday.